Good morning, Council. Jacqueline Ngutia, Commissioner, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Good morning, Wakili. My name is Fatuma Sichale. Karibu sana. Thank you. Good morning, Council. My name is Charity Kisutu, Commissioner, you're most welcome. My name is Isaac Ruto, member of the JSC. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Nzila Nikara. I'm a commissioner. Karibu. Thank you. Good morning. My name is David Majanja, commissioner and judge of the High Court. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. Oh, Justice yeah. Ibrahim. Yeah. I'm back. Yes. Um, uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome. My name is Justice Mohammed Ibrahim of the Supreme Court and commissioner. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, uh, I want to state from the onset that uh, Corrid worked with me at the county in Bometa, our county actually. I know him as such, we've worked with him. I don't know whether CJ, uh, I'm there for um, conflicted. Uh, well, um, the decision to recuse is usually personal, uh, especially if a member feels conflicted. If you do not feel conflicted, the disclosure is enough. Yeah, we just worked with him. He was our good officer. I have no conflicting issues. Very well. That is noted. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioners. Um, Mr. Kodil, the Commissioners will be engaging you on your application that you have made for the position of the judge of the High Court. Um, before we delve into the interview, you can confirm to us your county and your ethnicity. I come from the county of Bomet and I'm a Kipsigis. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Masharia will take us from there. All right, uh, a few questions. Um, the first one relates to your CV. I can see you've, you've uh, straddled between uh, a bit of practice, but also largely having worked in organizations as an in-house counsel. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Now, could you tell us uh, as a commission, um, the main reason why you are seeking to join the judiciary at this stage. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, my lord. <coughs> uh, I'm uh, true. I've worked uh, first. I started with the Capital Markets Authority, 1995 to 1998. Between 1998 and 2010, I worked with uh, James Finlay Kenya Limited, some multinational thief company in Kericho. Thereafter, I came back to private practice. Uh, 2016 and to 2017, I worked uh, with the county government of Bomet. <coughs> At this stage in time, um, I believe that uh, with the number of years that I have been in pri private practice, and uh, with the first knowledge that I have in management and uh, gained both in the private sector and the public sector, I believe that I have what it takes to be the judge uh, at this time, at this point in time. Now, you, you know, the position you are seeking is not a management one. It's uh, one where you are required to run the course of determining disputes, and that requires experience and you're competing against fairly experienced people. Now, could you demonstrate to the commission what specific experience you have and demonstrate by giving examples of uh, matters that you've handled where you think that they are of jurisprudential value or any other skills that you've acquired that you think by giving very specific examples that uh, you are judge ready. Uh, thank you. <coughs> thank you, Commissioner. I think uh, I, I believe the, the work of a judge would actually require both the administrative skills, the management skills, and uh, the, the, va the vast legal knowledge of an individual to be able to dispense with the, with the, with the, with the work at, in the office of the judge. 
Uh, as I have indicated, uh, I have the first, that first um, experience in management gained from my, my many years in the corporate world. On the side of practice and uh, the experience that I have, I have been able uh, in my own law firm in Kiricho, been able to handle uh, qu quite a good number of cases. I've actually successfully prosecuted them. Uh, of course, in practice, there is always uh, those. There are always those cases that you will win, and there are those cases that you will lose. One one case that come to mind involved uh, an estate of a very senior person in this country, where <coughs> uh, I prosecuted with my one of my colleagues uh, in Kisumu. It was a succession matter, and we successfully prosecuted it. Uh, it went to the Court of Appeal, uh, and uh, that is when our client gave up, but we were still uh, ready to pursue it to the end. I think there was some family cons concessions, and our client was sucked into the family issues. Ult ultimately, our client actually succeeded. At the moment, I'm an also handling a, high, a, high, a, high, uh, a very sensitive matter on uh, historical injustice, involving some families in Kiricho where they lost a lot of land to one of the multinational tea companies in Kiricho. And uh, uh, looking at all those cases that I've handled and uh, being, being, being in court since uh, 2010 when I resigned from my job in Finlay's, I have, I have, uh, have I, I, I believe that I have the ability, I have the knowledge, I have the experience uh, to be able to uh, sit in the office of the judge and dispense the duties in the office of the judge. Okay, so my final question. Um, you know, it's a constitutional imperative for us when it comes to picking people from uh, who are not JOs. Yes. You have to demonstrate that you are distinguished. This is not a discretion on our part. We must be able to show that amongst the ones who have competed, that you are indeed distinguished. So what makes you distinguished? And you remember, distinguished means that uh, in comparison with the others, you are way, way above. So that a reasonable person, looking at all the circumstances and looking at the interviews, these are interviews that are live, they can be able to say that among the applicants, as we chose Eric Neno, yes, he is indeed distinguished. So what is that? I have the integrity that is required by the office of the judge. I'm very sure that I can be accountable. Um, I also possess uh, the academic background that uh, has gone, I've gone through. Uh, I have an LLM and I think uh, my vast, first research uh, experience and uh, the past engagements in the county government and uh, in uh, the capital markets when I started as a legal officer, I'm very sure I have, I have that distinction to be able to sit in the office of the judge and be able to <coughs> dispense the duties of the judge. If allowed, I can be able to demonstrate even the work that I was do doing in the multinational companies, a lot of it involved a lot of legal work and uh, it, 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 it spread across a wide spectrum of legal uh, claims from the insurances, uh, community issues, and so many other issues. And I think I have, the, uh, I have the distinction and I have the experience to really sit in this office. And um, at the end of this session, uh, my ladies and my, my lords, uh, when you will be able to score all the other applicants, I think I'll also be able to be scored uh, quite well. Thank you, my lady. Uh, good morning once again. Good morning, <coughs> madam. You, you said you practiced, huh? Yes. Yes, in the area of civil law, I've seen in your CV. Yes. Uh, you've handled accident cases? At the, at the moment, I handle a lot of accident cases. Okay. I, I work for a, a good number of insurance companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but as a defense counsel. Okay. Yeah, my experience with um, accident cases uh, was, as was informed lightly when I was in James Finlay's. Mm -hmm. When I joined James Finlay's, they had more than okay, 7,000 matters. Yes. I got that in and, introduction. And accident cases are actually the defense. Okay. Mm. So now in fatal claims, yes. under the Fatal Accidents Act, 
uh, what kind of remedy is offered. Uh, yeah, let me leave it at that so that I don't <laughs> preempt the answer. What kind of remedy is offered in a fatal accident? Oh, my, in most cases, uh, there are general damages. Yes. So, uh, uh, and, and under what head? And special, and special damages in some cases where they are, they are demonstrable. Okay, under what head are the uh, general damages payable under the Fatal Accidents Act? What do we call that category of general damages? Okay, in a fatal accident, yes. generally, let me not limit you to any yes. act. What are the categories of damages, the heads of damages that are awarded ah. usually? Um, pain, 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 uh, we, we, the, 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 the general heads of damages that are mm. payable on fatal accidents. Yes. We love uh, loss, of, loss, of, loss of earnings if he was an employee. Mm -hmm. we, we also have pain, mm -hmm. uh, pain and loss. We also pain and suffering. Pain uh -huh. and suffering, yes. Uh -huh. We also, if if the if the if the if the if the, if the, if the, if the deceased was an employee, we also look at uh, the, the the lost opportunity to if his family, to, uh, okay, to, to his, his family, family and, uh, and and other dependents. So, which of those falls under the Fatal Accidents Act? Uh, the pain and suffering. Under the Fatal Accidents Act. I think I need to check that. Okay, yes. let's leave that. Eh? Yes. How do we calculate loss of dependency? It is usually the number of, uh, the, the number of remaining years mm -hmm. by the earnings of the individual mm -hmm. yeah, at, the, at, the, at the time of the accident. And uh, if that, that, uh, that person was just a general worker, we always go to the general order and look at the, 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 the general order and work from the general, uh, the, the wages general, that as a basis of calculation. So you say if he doesn't have a salary or if he doesn't have a pay slip? If he doesn't have a pay slip. Okay. If he's not employed and he doesn't so have a pay So what if he had no job? But that is one of the scenarios, again, that we'll use. Uh, look back to the general order and work on it. I've worked on it successfully. And, uh, the if he has no job at all? If he has no job. Because okay. okay. at the end of the day, that person was being depended on by someone. And uh, there is a loss to that family, especially if, 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 if the family demonstrated that he was a breadwinner. At the end of the day, uh, there must be a basis. Okay. That Just hear me out. What I asked, he has no job. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, my lady. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kolil, we are trying to locate your strengths in, know, in law. Uh, so which area of law would you say is your strength, is your strengths lie? My strength uh, in law lies in the land law, land law. and family division. Uh, uh, court for land matters. So I think we would benefit uh, from you on uh, matters of succession. Yes. Uh, let me take you to the Constitution when you are applying the provisions of the Bill of Rights and when you are interpreting the, the Bill of Rights. What would be your duty? I want you to tell us four uh, guiding principles that will guide you when you are interpreting the Bill of Rights? When, 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 I have a, when I'm faced with a matter and I'm interpreting the Bill of Rights, the first thing that I would actually look at is, uh, is there an infringement? If there is an infringement, yes. the, second, the second thing that I would look at is uh, has that infringement affected the individual to the extent that uh, that, that right has, has, has caused him harm and damage? Mm -hmm. So that's the second thing that I would actually look at. Mm -hmm. uh, the third one is uh, I would look at the, uh, the law, I would look at the constitution and look at the area where that infringement has come from and be able to match all those and be able to actually create a, mat a case out of it and be able to move, move on and uh, deal with that matter at that particular time. Yes. yes. Now you have found there is a case. Yes. So what will guide you in uh, compensating 
this uh, victim of uh, violation of rights? Um, the, 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 the guiding principle there would be the extent of uh, the violation uh, in the sense that... You uh, have found there is a yes, violation. Yes. So in uh, giving a remedy, what will guide you? I'll need to check on that, but you need to yeah, check I'll on need that. to check on that. Yeah. Yes, there are four broad principles. Broad, yeah, I know, I know those principles. Only that it's <laughs> yes, that's a hot seat. Yes, I think it's a hot seat, my my lady. Yes. Yes. Uh, now we can come closer to um, the area that you are familiar with. That is uh, the law of succession. Can you tell us uh, why are we still having a huge backlog of cases in succession matters that are not, uh, you know, we have the law of succession cap 160, which is very, very clear, but why are matters taking long in court? And what would you do to clear that backlog of the law of succession matters? Yeah. Um Succession matters are, are quite varied. Uh, the aspects within the suspect, suspe succession law are actually quite sentimental. And a lot of it actually, when you compare the land law, the, the ELC cases and succession cases, they run pari passu in the sense that they're almost the same. The main issues in succession law are actually aspects to do with land. The biggest aspect is land. And the main reason why, and this is this so, is what, as a judge, as a judge, how would you deal with that? As a judge, so as that a judge, they move fast because succession a, is separate. From yeah, no, I know. So yeah. As a judge, I would actually uh, encourage uh, alternative dispute resolutions in uh, in in succession matters as much as possible. Yes, because these are people who have uh, their own traditional ways and systems of sorting their own issues, given their back cultural background. Another thing that I would actually, I would actually kept in my mind so that I, it could be a comment from me to the commission is uh, the time taken also to sort out these succession matters is quite long. Once you, once you have actually prosecuted succession and you have the interim grant, the waiting period of six months personally from a legal point of view is what actually contributes a lot to the backlogs that are in the courts. If we are able to reduce that six months by way of uh, succession practice rules coming out to say, or the law actually being amended, to really look at that uh, six months and reduce it to DR, the IDR. Number two, you will recommend uh, uh, amendment to the law. To the law. Number three. Number three, uh, number three I would actually uh, ensure that uh, in my court, I'll give priority at any given time to those matters mm -hmm. and allocate a lot of time and ensure that uh, I, I hear succession matters in, as a matter of priority. Thank you. Yeah. Justice Majaj. Yes, thank you very much. I have looked at your sample writings. Uh, basically, they are all submissions, and I must say you write very well. Thank you. authority is very well. Thank you. And your train of thought is very clear. Thank you. So I'll just ask you one question. In one of the cases, you raised a preliminary objection. Yes. Uh, on a point of law. Yes. The locus classicus on preliminary objections is which case? Cas, uh, uh, there is the Kasman case. There is the... Are you sure? Kasman? No, no, Kassman, no, 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 not Kasman. Uh, there is the something Piscuit's case. Mukisa, Mukisa, Mukisa. Mukisa. Yeah. Mukisa. Now tell us about Mukisa, that Mukisa's case. case. Tell us about it. Yes. What happened? What did the Court of Appeal rule? Uh, in that case, the Court of Appeal. Uh, what was the issue in that case first? In Mukisa. Mm. Uh, Sorry, I'm, I'm getting mixed up in my mind on on, 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 on a few a few of those authorities in that have that have actually uh, come in on the Mukisa case. Mm -hmm. 
but Mukisa case uh, is a locus classicus on on preliminary objections. Yeah, on pre preliminary objections, but and and we use it we use it every often because okay. preliminary objections are 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 are, are quite 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 yes. a lot. In so the, the reason now I'm asking now now that you use it very often, can you tell us about the case itself? I'll need to check on on the facts of that case, my okay. lord. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Um, <coughs> a couple of uh, brief questions, uh, Mr. Kori, Council. Uh, I can see that uh, uh, you, you have a long experience in after your admission from the law school. You have you have been in practice for a total of twenty-seven years. Yes, uh, yes, my my lord. Quite a uh, good long period of experience. <coughs> um, I'm interested in your, in your, in your LLM thesis. I, and I'll ask you a question or two based on your LLM thesis. Um, you worked with um, James Finlay for 13, almost 13 years. Yes, yes, my lord. 12 years and 11 months. Yes, yes, my Quite lord. a long stint. Yes. After that, you went into private practice. Yes, yes, my lord. Then when you did your, 2017, you did your LLM. Yes, my lord. And the topic you chose is quite interesting, and, and I find it interesting myself. Uh, development and neocolonialism in the small-scale tea sector in Kenya. And uh, I think your experience in working for the tea farms and the tea industry and uh, sector influenced your decision. Sure, sure, sure to <coughs> to uh, take up this uh, topic as your thesis. Um, already, then your, the title of your uh, LLM thesis is very telling, neo-colonialism. Already there is a picture that uh, there is a message you are sending to us, the readers of this. <laughs> what is your conclusion? Uh, because in your thesis, you didn't uh, give us the whole thesis. It was cut short. I don't know whether it was internally my or you gave us the whole uh, my, thesis. My conclusion on my thesis was that uh, the local tea uh, sector needs to be revamped and um, the directors in those organizations need to be well learned and that uh, uh, they need to be stripped away from uh, the practices that the multinational tea companies uh, do within uh, Kenya. But the yeah. multinational national companies own the, the farms? Yes, in like the sense... The James Finlay. In the sense that they needed to do a lot of CSR activities within their communities. Mm. For once, like James Finlay, he didn't, uh, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't take in uh, tea, tea green leaf from the tea farmers all these years until the post-election violence of 20 to 2007, 2008, yeah. when they got convinced that they needed to help the farmers Okay. to offload a lot of green leaf into their system so that uh, farmers do not go into losses. So actually, it, uh, your thesis concluded, the, the result of the thesis was a critique, a critique of yeah, their practices. Of, yes, of the practices within uh, the KDTA systems and uh, the, the multinational okay. tea sector. Uh, I don't Kenya. want to go to the details. One day we'll have the opportunity to read it. But uh, why did you do this out of honest interest or, I, I or perhaps it. you are angry with them? Maybe no. did they terminate you? No, 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 no. Hmm. I did it out of a honest, a honest... Uh, no, you are no graduate with them? No, no, no. I resigned, I resigned from Finlay's under VR program hmm. and uh, they didn't want me to relieve because okay. I'd worked well for them for, 40, for uh, 13, 13 okay. years. Okay. Yeah. Thank I you. didn't have a graduate with them completely. Thank you. In Last fact, I've even retained my, my current uh, MD for Finlay's as hmm. my referee in my CV. Okay. Yeah. They didn't uh, question you after you wrote the tea? No, 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 no. no. And yeah. I've been a proponent for the small-scale uh, tea sector farmers in, in Bomet and Kericho. Okay. Yeah. And now, uh, lastly, um, uh, the Foreign Judgment Reciprocal Enforcement Act, Cap 43. Uh, recently, the tea farmers working under Finlay tea farms yes. went to Scotland and uh, they got judgment against Finland. Finlay Kenya Limited for breach of uh, their rights and award of damages, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, the decree was brought back and uh, it was sealed and taken to the AG's office. 
for enforcement against Finlay in Kenya. Yeah. But uh, what do you think of the act? But they didn't succeed because of the provisions of the act. What do you think of that act? I've been following up that matter also because uh, I, I had an interest in the sense that uh, they, they, they affected the employees in that class, the class cases uh, that was filed in the UK mm. were people whom I, I also... I no, also no, no, no. Regarding yeah. the, the Kenyan workers who got judgment... Yes, in the UK. Scotland, in Scotland, cannot Scotland enforce, yeah. They cannot get the fruits of judgment in Kenya, in Kenya because of a Kenyan act. What is your view? My view is that uh, I think the constitution also needs to be amended and to take into consideration such such issues. Constitution or the act itself? The, the act and the law needs to be relooked so that uh, such such cases can actually be admitted here in Kenya and uh, the victims are actually paid. Mm -hmm. I know the status of those victims. They are, they are lowly people and uh, their, their rights are clearly are, are lightly infringed in the tea okay. sector. And I think that that law needs to be really amended. Thank you. And uh, to suit in and, and fit in into involved quite a good number of hundreds of employees in the tea sector. Thank you. Yeah. All the best. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Good morning once again, Council. Morning, Andrew. What is your understanding of structural interdicts? I need to check that, uh, my, my lady. Okay. Yeah. okay uh, the second that question is. is that among the cases you'll be handling, in and some uh, you'll also be up, you, cases on appeal from tax dispute tribunal will come to your desk. What is the burden of proof in tax matters? The burden of proof lies with the with, with the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it is uh, it's it's always for care matters. I've known that the, the the burden of proof is quite high mm -hmm. on the taxpayer. You okay. must prove. You must have all the documents. You must have all at least have handled at least two tax cases. Okay. Yeah. And uh, site three of uh, the commissioner's action that can lead to that's in, in line with the with taxes uh, that can lead to an objection. What actions can a taxpayer object to? In a tax case? Yes. Um, I need to check that one again. Okay. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. And, uh, uh, Yes, my lady. Just one or two questions. Yes. Um, having practiced law for 27 years, mm -hmm. that is indeed a very long period. And uh, given your application, it is indeed true that uh, you've been in very many other sectors um, in the practice of the law that you've undertaken for the 27 years. However, when you become a judge of the High Court, uh, you will also be handling appeals from the magistrate's court. Yes, yes, my lady. And uh, it is important that uh, you're also well versed uh, with what you're supposed to do when it comes to appeals. So imagine you're handling a criminal appeal and uh, there is a case uh, whereby there is a magistrate who took the evidence of, say, five witnesses that magistrate was transferred. There is an incoming <coughs> magistrate uh, who now has to take over from the previous magistrate. Yes. As a judge, and looking at that record, what is it that you would want to ensure was complied with by the incoming magistrate? Uh, I would, uh, as a judge, I would, I would ensure that um, at least there is a proper understanding by the new magistrate on the proceedings of the of the, the of the of the outgoing magistrate in that the is sense, all right, in it? the sense that um, if 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 at the end of the day uh, the the incoming magistrate feels that uh, that case was not pro properly handled by his or her predecessor it was properly handled the proceedings are typed the new, yes. the incoming magistrate can read those proceedings. Mm -hmm. They are okay with those proceedings. There is no problem as far as the proceedings are concerned. 
I think it's, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll check that, uh, that that new magistrate came and closed the matter very well. What do you mean, close the matter uh, very well? Had it and um, uh, if there were remaining witnesses to be called, and uh, the matter would just, you'll actually, that the, that the new magistrate has taken that matter to is its there, logical conclusion. Is there an obligation that is placed upon the incoming magistrate that is provided by the criminal procedure code? Yes. What is that requirement that that magistrate must adhere to? That the incoming magistrate should be able to uh, ensure that uh, the, the proceedings is up to the date when he or she is taking mm -hmm. over. I've all complied with uh, the, 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 all the provisions uh, within the civil procedure uh, code. After this session, please check section 200 yes. of the CPC. CPC. Yes. yes. And see what it says. Yes. Eh? Yeah. And, and finally, from me, um, again, uh, the High Court exercising its appellate jurisdiction, and you are looking at a record where a plea was taken. Or basically, simply put, how is a plea recorded in a criminal matter? You are, you, you are the judge looking yes. at what the magistrate did. Plea, plea taking is a, a technical a technical session that must be handled very well by a magistrate. Uh, the plea taking session must be properly recorded. Yeah, yeah. So, so I want us to go through the motions. It has to be done very well, very well. I agree with yes. you. But what is it that is done? When, when a plea is taken, when, when, when the accused is brought before the, the magistrate, uh, the plea is taken, is given an opportunity to answer, then uh, it is properly recorded. A magistrate also takes a mention date within two weeks. The same accused would actually be brought back uh, to come and take a plea again during the time of mention. Supposing yes. the, uh, the accused person has pleaded guilty. During plea taking, the accused person pleads guilty. Uh, when, when, when the accused person pleads guilty, you don't, you don't as a, as a magi the magistrate should not be able to uh, sentence that person straight away. At least he actually recorded very well that the accused has pleaded guilty. And uh, the motions of actually preparing this accused person for, for, for to, try to stand trial would have actually been concluded, checking the mental state of the, the accused, ensuring that the accused has the capacity to be able to take the plea, and ensure that uh, at least the accused is a person who can understand uh, all That's that. That's very well said. Yes. You have read the charge to the accused person. The accused person has pleaded guilty. What is the next course of action? The next course of action is... Uh, uh, the magistrate actually will have that matter mentioned so that the, the, senten the, the, the sentencing can actually happen. Thank you very much. I think we'll leave it at that. I can see that most of your practice has actually may maybe, maybe been civil. 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 Yeah, civil. Yeah, but you know now here we will not I choose. Know. Eh? I know. We I will know. not pick and choose. I know, but my, oh. my, la my lady at least when I become a judge, at, <laughs> at least I work hard and ensure right. that my court is All is right. Here. All no. the best. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, I have only one general question for you, Council. Uh, if you were to conduct a sort of analysis today of our judicial system, would you pick two opportunities that exist and uh, advise us on how we can build on those opportunities and how do we mitigate on the threats, just two of each? The, the opportunities that I, I see in the judicial system that are available is uh, the, 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 the stressing uh, the use of alternative dispute resolution systems that are in place to reduce the case loads. Number two, the other, the other, the other opportunity that I see is uh, maybe through the Judicial Service Commission, uh, we can actually do a partnership with the county government and uh, county governments and do a lot of public education across the counties and ensure that uh, people understand their rights and understand why uh, when they come to court what are the processes and what are the systems that are there so that 
these backlog issues can actually be shortened. Because there, there is a laguna, there is, there is a missing link between uh, the public and the courts. And uh, that is actually, uh, that has informed uh, the low confidence of the populace. The courts, what is the lacuna? The, no, no, the lacuna, the understanding, the, the understanding of court processes by people who come to court. That, that is what is missing. So uh, I've been thinking that uh, the courts have an opportunity to tell, to tell their story to the public, possibly through the, the county attorney offices in the counties, so that when people come to court, they are well aware of what, what they need to do in court. And I, I've always looked at that as an opportunity that has not been explored towards actually reducing this backlog in the court, court processes in Kenya. Because if, if, if we have a populace, a, a population that really knows their rights and know how to approach the courts, it becomes so easy for them even to sort out their issues within the villages using their traditional systems before they come to court. And I think that's an opportunity that needs to be really looked at uh, judicially within, within this country. And that is what has been missing. Because people come to court expecting a lot of hope. But when they get to court, they are frustrated between the registries and the hearings. And they come to court so many times until some of them die along the way before the matters are closed. And that necessitates uh, coming back to court to <coughs> uh, seek for substitutions and all that. And even when, it gets, when, when the main person dies, that matter just uh, lapses just like that in the court systems. And they don't come to court because they are not aware of how to do it, especially people who come to court and they are not represented. So I always look at that as an opportunity that uh, we can actually have to reduce this backlog in, uh, in, in the court cases. If explanations are done in the villages through the county uh, attorney offices, by the, in the collaborations with JSC and other legal bodies in this country, people would actually find easy to actually talk among themselves and be able to solve the disputes that they have. And even if they file cases, they'll actually understand why an ADR system needs to be put in place so that that matter can be sorted very fast. Yeah. The threats now in the judiciary is the low, uh, the low confidence that people have within the, ju within the judiciary. And that threats come in with a lot because of the, there are so many issues b between when a party files a matter in court and when a matter ends. There are, there are so many issues that really affect uh, litigants within the court process. One of them is the corrupt systems that we have in the, in the, in the, in the, in the judiciary. And a lot, of <coughs> a lot of that corruption is usually perpetrated within the registries in the courts. And uh, I, thank the ju I, I thank the Judicial Service Commission and uh, the courts in Kenya because of this employment of the IT system. It's going to reduce uh, the corruption uh, indexes within the judiciary uh, systems very, very much and, and, and sort out the... the and, and uh, uh, you said how will the corruption be reduced? That you said corruption exists in the judiciary. Yes, it's there. I can so it's not a perception. It's not Indeed a perception. It exists. I'm a practitioner in Kericho. It's, it happens. Filing a matter, pushing a matter, and uh, ensuring that a matter ends takes, takes, a lot of, uh, takes a lot of corrupt practices to happen. How do you explain a, a matter like a succession case? Someone comes to court under certificate of agency or in January. Uh, by March, you already have a grant under certificate of agency. Whereas the normal, the, mon the normal succession process takes up to about 10 months before a council who genuinely follows the succession matters within the court process uh, have his grant. It's because of someone within the court is able to certify that as agent, uh, how it runs to the uh, director general at the government printers, a, a gazette be given, and uh, a grant is given within two months. So how will you deal with that when you become a judge? Yes, I would actually not allow uh, succession under certificate of agency. I would, I would, I would decline it completely. Because that's part, imagine in a village where someone has been in court from, I have a case that has been in court since 2008. And uh, a, a next villager uh, in the village comes in under certificate of agency through the guidance of a lawyer. Of course, this thing is perpetuated between ourselves, lawyers, and, and the registry staff and all the other people in the judiciary. And that those neighbors, this one is telling him, I went to court two months, I have my grant. The other one is saying, we've been in that court since 2008. You will not, you will not expect uh, confidence to be inspired within that village if that happens. And that's why if I became a judge today, I would be very hard 
I will not allow any certificate of urgency to be done in the lower court or in my court. I will refuse and on, on succession matters. Okay. Even, if, even, if, even if the reasons that are, are being proffered uh, before me are so serious, I would actually tell them to, 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 to deal with it on the early term systems, to deal with it with limit, limited grants as we pursue the succession matter. Succession matters, uh, once, once a grant comes out in two months, as a, as a lawyer, I'll, all, I'll go to court and object it, and it takes another 10 years to end. Because the reasons given by these guys uh, asking for certificate and urgency would, be, would always be lies. They would have lied across the system to get the grant, run to the Ministry of Lands, using the corrupt systems, they, they, they transfer the parcels of lands. And uh, within that system, the only, the only way the other family members would get to know that uh, a grant was issued is when they are being served with a court order that this land needs to be subdivided by a surveyor. So they wake up and say, when was the succession done? When you go back to the system, you find that succession only took two months and the failure has a grant. And that's why I'm saying confidence within the court needs to be enhanced by actually looking at the overall system and really interrogating it and looking at it piece by piece and seeing how it okay, can be done. Okay, yeah. okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Uh, um, I can see preferred here. Are there other methods in which we can help for the public to access justice? We have on record that over 80% of Kenyans actually don't come to our courts. Now, other than you seem to prefer the ADR, are there other ADR methodologies? ADR works. Yeah? ADR, ADR works. I'm a proponent of ADR myself. Uh -huh. Yeah, ADR really works. And if you can, we can, you can, we can look at uh, better results if this ADR system is also redomesticated re down to maybe the county courts. We can have go back to the county courts and have these county courts maybe moving from. I mean, moving, moving from one uh, sub-county to another sub-county to handle these uh, issues on, 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 on court matters. We can be able to reduce this backlog because 80% of the court matters, I can talk about Kericho, 80% of the court matters in Kericho is land cases and succession matters. Yeah. Now, uh, when we talk about alternative dispute resolution mechanism, are there other alternative justice systems that can also be looked at? What are they? What, how many, uh, what else do you do? Would you suggest we adapt to solve the problem of yeah. delays? Maybe we think about, we do a, we do a case study with the Rwandan uh, village court systems, I don't know, uh, see how it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but ADR, ADR is the best system that can actually uh, work, 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 work a lot of magic within our courts. Because yeah. it cuts across all sectors, even some of the criminal matters that the small criminal matters that actually hang around the court for a while can actually be dealt off with uh, an out of some out of court settlement processes that can be put in place. Yes, the only big problem is that uh, wherever we have these out court out of court and uh, ADR uh, pro processes, we are challenged uh, in our court systems because we don't have a lot of a lot of courts do not have the facilities for. For the ADR, uh, for the ADR systems to take place, the side that you'll find them actually on tents, which do not have chairs, do not have tables, but those are administrative issues within the courts. But I would actually uh, propose as a proponent for ADR myself that uh, this this system be be given a, a boost, it be supported in our courts, yes. so that uh, this backlog of cases can actually be reduced. Now, you also mentioned about uh, uh, prevalence of corruption and you admit that uh, this is an endemic problem which is not just limited to our staff that the la the lawyers also perpetrate it yeah what in your, what would you do as a lawyer now or what is um, what do you propose within your profession how do we tackle it we may know how to tackle on or we may have ideas on how to tackle it on our side how about on the part of the lawyers themselves law, law society needs to come out very clearly and uh, really talk about it very openly and uh, we should be able to flag ourselves as lawyers on who, who who is doing that within the court because amongst ourselves we know when you see a file moving very fast no, nothing stops you from making a conclusion that this file is being propelled by corrupt practices 
Yeah. So as Law Society of Kenya needs to put it in its agenda and it needs to be discussed, it needs to be an open, an open discussion and we need to do it. Uh, this also has been uh, lawy lawyers, lawyers, lawyers and their clerks within their offices. Those are the people who perpetuate this, this vice. And I think uh, if the Law Society comes out very boldly and in the agenda can talk about this vice, it's going to be reduced marginally. And uh, we are going to see a lot of confidence coming back to the courts. Yeah. Uh, lastly, again on the on the corruption question, how comes in Kericho talk of corruption and corruption is at the top? How comes? Because uh, it seems to be a matter that is uh, yeah, it's, quite it's epidemic in that area. It's, 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 it's common. It's common in Kericho. I don't know why, but uh, at least... It, it's common. It's there. I can confidently say that without 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 any contradiction. Yeah. Okay. But but that is a, is a vice that we can all handle as as a team, a judicial service, law society of Kenya, uh, court users association, and all these other parties with the in, involved in the court systems. We can actually sit down and really look at it and say okay, this is a vice that needs to be stopped. Yeah. Thank you, Honorable C J. Uh, Mr. Korir, some of the documents that uh, you were requested to submit, there was the declaration of uh, assets, liabilities, and income. <clears throat> I haven't seen that in your submission. I, th I thought that would actually apply to someone who, who works because I'm in private practice. I didn't submit that one. I thought it would not apply to me. Okay. Yes. Do you know why it's important to submit yes, that I document? Yes, I, I know. Why do we uh, ask for it to be submitted? Or why is it important to submit it that document? It's important because it talks about the individual actually making the application for a job like this. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a self-declaration form that you tell, you, tell, you tell the commission and you tell uh, any, any, other, any other audience that uh, this is who I am. And uh, these are my assets, these are my liabilities, and all these other things. I did not submit because I thought that uh, that would only be done by people who are actually in employment. But it's done periodically. Do you know oh, why yes. we do it periodically? Yes, yes, yes. Why? I know. It's done periodically so that uh, at least uh, the, user, the, the users of that form would be able to see the progression of an individual in terms of uh, wealth and liabilities that, that they have. Okay. Yes. So in your bid, you did not think that uh, because you're considering you for this position, we I'm also so need to know where I'm we start you I'm off so at. I'm so sorry. I did, I, did, I, did, I did not intentionally leave it out. I personally thought that would be done uh, because I, when I went to Bomet, I actually did it. I actually did it. And when I appeared before uh, the county government public service board, I, I actually presented that to the county assembly. But for the GAC, you did not think it no, was I, important? No, 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 no. I, it's not that I didn't think that it was important. I thought that now that I'm no longer in formal employment, uh, I didn't feel it. But I can still feel it. There's no, no problem. Okay. Yes. Um, having been in private practice for over 20 years, I'm sure you have looked at the downsides and the good sides of becoming a judge. Yes. Could you please give us two of each that you've been uh, juggling with? Uh, the good side, um, the good side uh, of being a judge, of wanting to be a judge in this country, is to be able to offer my services to the Kenyans and be able to serve this country uh, as a public servant uh, in my capacity as a judge. Uh, I would also be able to help. Uh, I think I have the skills, I have the competence, I have the integrity uh, to also help the judiciary in actually tackling some of these vices uh, like corruption, backlog okay, cases, and actually going even to the villages to ensure that uh, I use my mechanisms to really sensitize the villagers on how to, how to go about uh, with the court matters. The downsides about this is that uh, as a judge, you are expected to keep a kind, a, a set of life that would naturally change from my practice, my, my private practice. I can do anything now. I can work within Kericho Town without, without anything. But I'm very sure as a judge, my level would be, would be enhanced. So I would need to, and I need to really, really look at my integrity so that even the places that I would go, 
I will not go as I would usually uh, go very freely. So I think that's the downsides of being a judge. But overall, the, 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 the advantages and of getting... You've given me one downside. I wanted to. Another downside of, uh, of, of being a judge is the perception of the public. Uh, especially if they know that uh, Eric Kurir has been a very good person and all of a sudden I become a judge. And uh, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of perception is out there about the, the judicial officers uh, in terms of uh, how, they, how they manage the court cases, how they do their matters in court. Because we have, we have clients who walk to us and they tell you, hey, Korir, I want to give you this matter, but you need to talk to a judge. I've always told them, no, I talk to a judge by appearing before him. I don't talk, go talk to a church from the So sidelines. the area of perception, how have you prepared yourself I'm well that you're going to be getting this backlash? I'm well, I'm well prepared about that. How have you prepared yourself? I'm well that? prepared. Uh, I, have, I have a past experience where I walked in, uh, where perception also was there, and uh, I, I kept myself very clean for the period that I worked for that employer. I've, I was even given tax uh, the, the names and all that. But I still uh, walk tall and ensure that I did my work as I was required. Okay. And at least now within Kericho town and within Baumea town, I'll not look back because I'm very clean. I've never tied anything that belongs to any, 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 anyone. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, and I wish you the thank very you best. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, now, on uh, corruption in uh, Kericho uh, and um, this expandite and uh, applications and a certificate of urgency under the law of succession. Yes. Have you raised that matter at the court users committee? I, I currently have two matters that uh, I have, have uh, that I just took brief. Uh, I was given the other day two matters, one in Sotik and one in Kericho. So you need so to raise just, it. I'll, I'll at, do that. I'll uh, raise it. I'll the raise court it, my users Lord, committee, my lady. because yes. my recollection of the law of succession has no provision yes. for certificate yes. of urgency. Yes. It has no provision for applications. You I just have to file a petition and you go to court and do the substantive matter. Thank, that, you. Uh, Th thank you, my lady. That is the determination yes. of who are to be appointed as the administrators of the estate and the next stage is the determination of the beneficiaries and yes. the, the and distribution. distribution of the estate. Mm -hmm. So if you can help us will, by becoming a champion, I'll, 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 I'll do that. I already filed. I already filed my objections to, uh, to the to the to the to the grant. Yeah. And uh, I'll actually raise it up with the court users association. I, yes. I'm, I'm very bold about it. I don't shy away. Yes. Because uh, with my years I, of practice, I'm saying you also discussed it with the JSC, and yeah, the JSC I'll, recommended the matter be discussed at the court users committee. I'll do. I'll do that. Thank you very much. I think this brings us to the end of the interview. A very interesting interaction with you this morning. Uh, we wish you well, and we send you back to Kiricho with our greetings. Thank you. When we finish the exercise, we will get in touch with you. Thank you. But we wish you well. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, encourage you to continue doing the right thing and becoming a champion for good practices. Thank you. But if you have any question, you can also ask us. Um, the, the, the issues that I had, I've actually discussed it within, uh, within my answering of the questions. One of them was uh, a possibility of uh, the JSC uh, with other bodies involved uh, of reducing this uh, number of months that one has to wait for the succession matters to, to be able to end. Yes. Uh, number two is that uh, I have, I have, I have, I have, being a proponent of uh, ADR, Yes. I don't know how best we can actually um, <coughs> take these ADR systems into our, our, our local local villages and local units uh, through the court systems and yes. be able to, to really to really expound on it and have these matters handled uh, within, within within those areas. Because I'm very sure uh, if we took it down there, someone would just say, "And I have a case in Kericho, I have a case in Sotiko Bomet." which has been lying there for the last three, four years. Why don't I try this idea? By, mm. the, by doing that, we are able to reduce this backlog. Mm. Thank you those, very those much. Those are the two things that I had. Other is thank you so much uh, for my areas that I was not able to properly articulate. I'm sorry. I have what it takes to be a judge. Um, I request honestly that I be given this opportunity uh, to serve uh, as a judge and to serve 
as uh, and to and to work for the, for the Kenyans in this capacity as a judge. Lastly, okay. I take this opportunity to thank everyone for giving me this opportunity to appear before you. It's a privilege, mm -hmm. and I, I will not take it uh, for granted. Thank you so much. Uh, thank and, you very much. Thank you. Even your views on uh, how we can make the law more effective are uh, taken into account, and even how to scale up our NJS so that we can get to the villages and get uh, people to solve their own disputes. It's within the framework yes. of the judiciary. Sure. So thank you very much and we wish you well. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.